In the previous video, we learned about elevator angle per g as a measure for maneuverability. And uh, now we're going to use that expression to learn about something else called the stick-fixed maneuver point and the stick-fixed maneuver margin. And it comes from this expression for the elevator angle per g. Okay, so um, let's start off by uh, using our definition of the neutral point. And actually, let's, um, let's first draw a picture here. So we've got a main wing and a horizontal. And at some point, we have a center of gravity and also an aerodynamic center um, on this aircraft. Okay, so this is the CG, and this is the aerodynamic center, or uh, we also call that the neutral point. Okay, so the distance that the neutral point is aft of the CG, we're gonna call that L sub NP. That's the length to the neutral point. And uh, for our time being here, uh, I'm actually gonna switch back to aerodynamic coordinates where X is pointing aft, okay? So when we put a subscript on X, that means a, a, a larger value for X is further aft. Okay, so the definition of the neutral point, uh, LNP uh, divided by C bar W, that's the static margin, right, that we've discussed before. So the static margin, um, the simplified version of that, if we're neglecting vertical offsets, is um, that's equal to minus CM alpha over CL alpha. So uh, we can actually, we're just going to rearrange this and say that um, CM alpha is equal to minus LNP over C bar W times CL alpha, okay? And I'm going to use this expression and, uh, and one other expression, actually, that the LNP is equal to the X location of the neutral point minus the X location of the CG, okay? So I'm going to use these two expressions and plug them into, uh, into uh, this equation up here, okay? And, uh, and after doing that and rearranging a bit, uh, we can rewrite that equation as... Uh, as this here. So we've got the weight coefficient minus CL Q bar times G C bar W over 2V squared divided by CM delta E plus CL delta E times X and P minus X C G divided by C bar W, and all of that is multiplied by uh, CM Q bar times G C bar W over 2V squared <clears throat> over CW, that's the weight coefficient, minus CL Q bar G C bar W over 2V squared minus XNP over C bar W uh, plus XCG over C bar W. Okay, so it doesn't look like we uh, simplified it much, but this equation actually shows us some interesting things. So um, one thing we note is that uh, if this term is equal to zero, then our elevator angle per G will be zero. And uh, that's actually a, a really dangerous thing. So our elevator angle per G is some measurement of the maneuverability of this aircraft. And if that goes to zero, uh, what that means is that for an infinitesimal change in elevator, you have an infinite change in G loading. Now, of course, our analysis here is based off of small angles and uh, linear aerodynamics. And so, um, it's really not accurate for an infinite change in G loading, but uh, but even so, that that uh, condition, if this equation is equal to zero, that's a very dangerous uh, condition for an aircraft. Um, the a pilot can control the aircraft if our elevator angle per G is some finite value, and a computer can control it uh, even if that is is a bit smaller uh, because it has a faster reaction time. 
but uh, but if it goes to zero, not even a computer can control this aircraft. Okay, so this is a very important um, uh, uh, concept for an aircraft. This uh, this point where the elevated angle per g might go to zero. And so we can see from this part of the equation here that there is some center of gravity location. There's some value for the center of gravity that would make this term go to zero. Okay, so let's find. Uh, what that location is, where the center of gravity location is that would force that term to zero. And so what we're looking for here is for the XCG location uh, where the elevator angle per G is equal to zero, okay? And we're going to call that location the maneuver point. That's the X location of the maneuver point. And so we can just solve uh, this stuff in brackets. We just set this whole thing equal to zero and solve for this term here. And, uh, and what we'd get there for that uh, XMP is going to be equal to XNP. And I've multiplied through by C bar W here. Um, minus C bar W, uh, CM Q bar times G C bar W over 2V squared uh, divided by C W minus C L Q bar. Uh, times g c bar w over 2v squared, okay? So if the center of gravity is located at this location, uh, then then uh, that's what's called the maneuver point, and that will create a uh, an elevator angle per g of zero. Okay, so this is called the uh, the maneuver point. And uh, more specifically, this is called the stick fixed maneuver point, okay? Now, finding this location is not quite as straightforward as it might seem uh, because these derivatives here, um, let's see, CM Q bar and CL Q bar both depend on the location of the center of gravity. And so these derivatives are gonna change as we change the center of gravity. So, uh, so it would take an iterative approach in order to actually find this location on the aircraft, but nevertheless, uh, there's this point called the maneuver point where if our center of gravity is located at this location, our uh, elevator angle per G will go to zero. So that's called the maneuver point. Now, we can also non-dimensionalize that just like we did the, the uh, static margin, which was the, the distance from the, that the neutral point is aft of the CG divided by C bar W. That's called our static margin. We can do the same thing with the maneuver point. And so we're going to... Uh, define this thing, which is LMP. So that's the distance that that maneuver point is aft of the center of gravity divided by C bar W. This is what we're going to call the maneuver margin. And uh, that's defined as X maneuver point minus XCG divided by C bar W. Um, and that, uh, if we just plug that into this equation here, so if, if we just uh, take uh, uh, this and minus XCG over C bar W and divide by C bar W, um, then what we get is um, there's going, we can change that first term back to a uh, LNP over C bar W, which is our uh, static margin, right? Uh, minus C M Q bar times G C bar W over two V squared divided by C W minus C L Q bar G C bar W over two V squared. Okay. So that's our expression for the maneuver margin. Uh, by definition, what that is is it's this, this location, the, this maneuver point, uh, minus the uh, location of the center of gravity, wherever that is. Uh, so it's the distance after the center of gravity divided by uh, the C bar W. And from our equation, uh, we can show, or from this development here, that we can show that it's uh, reference, that you can, um, it's actually just an addition to the static margin. So it's the static margin location uh, minus some term here. Now, uh, 
we can't, uh, let, be, it's kind of hard to see some of the physics here because CMQ bar and CLQ bar depend on the CG location itself. Um, but there is something that we can deduce here. And uh, that is, so if we notice in this uh, this lower term here, uh, this, this denominator here, we've got a weight coefficient minus CLQ bar times some stuff here. So it turns out that this uh, term right here is always, or I don't know if I should say always, but most of the time, going to be much smaller than our weight coefficient, okay? So this denominator is dominated by this weight coefficient, which is positive, okay? So I've got a positive number here in the denominator. And then in the numerator, um, we've got this CMQ bar. Well, if we go back to our development of CMQ bar, we see that CMQ bar is always negative. That's our pitch damping derivative, uh, which is always negative. So uh, two things we notice here is that CW is much greater than CL uh, Q bar times G C bar W over 2V squared. And uh, that CM Q bar is less than zero. Okay, our pitch stamping derivative is always less than zero. So what that means is that... Um, this whole term here is always going to be negative, okay? So when we have a negative there and then we have the negative out front, uh, what that tells us is that LMP, so what that tells us here is that LMP is always greater than LNP, okay? So uh, because we've got the negative here, the negative there, that's going to be a positive value uh, that's added to LNP. So LMP, which is what we were solving for over here, is always going to be greater than LNP. In other words, the maneuver margin, uh, if you just divide both of these by C bar W, then we have the, uh, the difference between the maneuver margin and the static margin. So essentially the maneuver margin will always be greater than the static margin. So if we come back up here to our uh, drawing, that tells us that uh, we're gonna have some uh, maneuver point here. This is called the maneuver point. And that maneuver point will always sit aft of the neutral point or the aerodynamic center. So the good news here is that if we are statically stable, if we have a positive uh, static margin, meaning that our CG is in front of the aerodynamic center, uh, then we will never have this dynamic issue of our elevator angle per G going to zero because uh, that means that our CG is forward of this uh, location here. And it's only when our CG moves that far back to that maneuver point that we have, um, that then it goes to zero. And that's the, the dangerous point there. Now, uh, so most aircraft, um, I shouldn't even say most aircraft, but many aircraft have a positive static margin, meaning that the CG is forward of the aerodynamic center. And the rule of thumb there is that you want a 5% static margin. Uh, okay, so that this ratio here should be um, 5%. Um, and that's just a rule of thumb, but, uh, but even the right flyer actually had a negative static margin. Not all aircraft have a positive static margin. And... Uh, there's actually, the more stable an aircraft is, the larger the static margin, usually the less maneuverable it is. And so fighter aircraft, for example, uh, have a center of gravity that sits behind the aerodynamic center, uh, and that increases their maneuverability. It decreases their stability, increases their maneuverability. Uh, of course, they also have onboard uh, uh, stability augmentation systems that are run by a computer that make the aircraft feel more stable than it really is. And then when they need the maneuverability, they can maneuver quickly because their center of gravity is further back. Uh, but if you're going to design an aircraft like that, you have to be very careful that your center of gravity does not get back to the maneuver point. Because uh, if, you, if your CG moves that far aft, then even the computer cannot uh, control the aircraft. And actually, if, you, if your CG is behind this, then your elevator control uh, flips directions. So... Um, uh, anyway, that's a very important point to know on the aircraft. And we're actually going to use that information now uh, to study one important question, and that is, uh, what kind of a maneuver margin do you want? You know, there's this rule of thumb of 5% for a static margin, uh, but we've just learned about the maneuver margin, and uh, it turns out that for dynamic 
uh, evaluation of an aircraft, the maneuver margin is really important. And so we're now going to look at, uh, you know, what kind of man maneuver margin do you want? And that information comes from, uh, from uh, handling qualities studies and pilot opinion. So we'll talk about that next.